How is it going? Today, we're going to discuss IndexedDB. It's a very fascinating technology, and I think that every front-end developer out there needs to know what IndexedDB is and when to use it. So the goal of today's content is not to give you the knowledge to use IndexedDB, but more of to talk about IndexedDB in a higher level overview so you can make the right decision when it comes time when you're doing any kind of software design so you can make the right decision and maybe incorporate IndexedDB into your arsenal and into the project that you're working on because it's a very powerful technology and there are trade-offs when using it and there are important things to know when you're using it. So with that being said, let's get started. First, what is IndexedDB? IndexedDB is a low-level API for client-side storage. So simply put, it's a storage solution. You can store data in many different ways when it comes to storing data in the browser. The most popular ones are local storage and cookies. So IndexedDB is simply another way to store data. But IndexedDB is much more than that. IndexedDB is much more powerful than local storage and cookies because it's an actual DB. Essentially, it's a DB built into the browser. So how does IndexedDB work? Well, IndexedDB has something that's called an object store. And you can think of an object store as a table or as a collection, like in other databases. So an object store is simply a key value store. It's where the data is stored and an IndexedDB database may have multiple stores. But IndexedDB isn't just like a database. There are differences because unlike server-side databases, IndexedDB is client-side. The data is stored in the client's browser, which we don't have access to. So this is why whenever we publish a new version of our app and the user visits our web page, they need to update the database. So Every, any logic for versioning and all of that needs to be handled by the developer. There are more things that the developer needs to handle when it comes to error handling. What happens if there is no more space? What happens if a user is in incognito or if a user deleted the data? We're not going to touch more about all of these different things that you should probably be aware of when implementing IndexedDB, but I just want to mention that versioning and error handling are stuff that needs to be handled by the developer. Let's talk about the benefits of using IndexedDB. First, IndexedDB can store significant amount of data, including files and blobs. It's also very fast as it uses indexes to enable high performance searches of data. It stores almost any kind of value by keys, and you can have multiple key types. Every operation is done in a transaction, so you get reliability out of the box. IndexedDB works well with offline apps combined with service workers. IndexedDB also works extremely well with web workers. And IndexedDB has mostly an asynchronous API, which means that performing costly operations won't block the UI thread, providing a sloppy experience to users. Now, I do want to add an asterisk to this point because there are some blocking behaviors to IndexedDB, as we will see. But first, let's compare IndexedDB to something like local storage. So in IndexedDB, you can store almost any kind of value, including files and blobs. But in local storage, you can only store strings. In IndexedDB, you get full web worker support, but in local storage, you can't use a web worker. IndexedDB has a more complex API. It gets better with certain libraries that simplify things, but it's a lot more complex than local storage simple API. IndexedDB API is asynchronous, while local storage API is synchronous. IndexedDB can store much more data than local storage. We're looking at something around the two gigabyte, depends on multiple different things and on the browser. And compared to local storage, we can store, store between 2 to 10 megabytes, again, depending on the browser. Every, every major browser supports IndexedDB and local storage, so it's the same in both. IndexedDB gives you indexing, while local storage doesn't. And in IndexedDB, operations are done within a transaction in, contact, in contrast to local storage, where there are no transactions. So IndexedDB sounds awesome, but let's talk about actual and potential use cases. 
First, storing edits without having to sync every single character change back to the server immediately. This is something that Google Drive and Google Docs does. So when you're using Google Docs and you're writing, they're actually using they're actually using IndexedDB behind the scenes to sync everything up. So you can do something like that to ensure edits are synced to the server and everything is saved first of all to IndexedDB and then to the server. IndexedDB also gives you the possibility to cache different assets such as fonts or images and it's much better caching the local storage obviously because of the support for files and blobs but also because of its asynchronous nature and how much data you can store. But IndexedDB is not perfect. It has actual limitations. One of the most important limitations to be aware of, and it's not really a limitation, it's just something to be aware of when using IndexedDB, and it's actually the reason I said before that IndexedDB can block the UI. And the reason is because IndexedDB uses something that's called uh, the standard serialization algorithm or the structured, clone algorithm, the structured clone algorithm to store and clone an object. So every time you send an object to IndexedDB, first, it has to be cloned and the cloning of the object happens on the main thread. So the larger object the object will be, the longer it will take and it still has the potential to block the UI. This means that while IndexedDB reads are asynchronous and this is actually powerful, they do not block the UI, the writes, not really. So you can encounter problems with that. So while UI blockage can happen, and you do need to be careful about it. Overall, IndexedDB is pretty fast. And the good news is there are a few things you can do to make sure that it stays fast. And there are even more things to do to make sure that the UI doesn't block. First, you want to make sure you don't save huge objects. Storing large objects, such as state objects, is not going to work well. The correct approach is to actually break it down. So instead of saving a huge object and saving something like the entire state in a single tree, simply break it down into individual records. Only update the ones that change. So the same is true for any kind of object. It's always better to store items individually and then patch them. So transferability and patchability must be an architectural decision from the get go. Now, if you did the architecture right and everything is being stored in individual records and that's still not enough, you can actually skip the cloning structure algorithm by sending the data in a binary format. So by transferring an array buffer, you will skip the cloning algorithm and this will be extremely fast regardless of the size of the array buffer. Now, if that's not an option for some reason, if for some reason you don't, you, or you can't or you don't want to send an array buffer, then you can use web workers. So you may want to opt in to use web workers because IndexedDB works just as fast with web workers. And of course, everything from web worker to IndexedDB is fully asynchronous without blocking the UI. To sum it all up, IndexedDB is an entire different beast than local storage. It's a full blown solution for client side storage and definitely the best one available, supporting things like transactions and higher storage limits and storing almost any kind of data, etc. And of course, you only want to use IndexedDB if you actually need a database. So if you don't need a database, if all you need is a simple key value storage and you're using simple objects, then please opt in to use local storage. You're going to have much better results and it's going to be much simpler. And one last thing, one last tip is that yes, IndexedDB is the best solution available for client storage, but while being the best solution, it's also the most complex solution. So this is why it's highly recommended to use a wrapper library that simplifies the IndexedDB syntax and turns it into promises as well. With all of that being said, thank you so much for listening or watching this content. I had a lot of fun making it. I hope you did too. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any note or suggestion or anything to add. This is also available in Spotify as a podcast and in YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you next time.